How would you describe law and grace? Now, you know, if you're going down the highway, traveling at the speed limit, or just a, a little bit above the speed limit, and someone goes zooming around you, and uh, you go on down the highway three or four miles, and, and they've been pulled over, and the, the policeman's out of the car talking to them, that's law. I mean, they've gotten what they deserve, and you've got to go by and, with, a, with an uplifted heart in knowing that, uh, that they've gotten, gotten what they deserve. Now, on the other hand, if you're traveling down the highway just a little above the speed limit, or, or maybe more than just a little, because you have reasons, you, you're justified, you, you need to get to where you're going quickly, and the policeman doesn't stop you, well, that's great. You know, it seems that law and, and grace are, are two theological terms that, uh, that we hear about and, and two theological concepts that we, we sometimes struggle with. It, in our, even in our Christian walk, we know we're supposed to, to live by grace, and yet we kind of go back and forth, sometimes living more in grace, sometimes living more under the law. Not that the law is what God desires, but that's just that's a part of our, our struggles. Well, when I think of, of grace, the first verse that comes to mind for me is in Ephesians chapter 2, where Paul wrote, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so no one can boast. Salvation comes to us by grace. It's a gift from God. It's nothing that we can earn. It's nothing that, there's nothing we can do to, to deserve it or achieve it. But simply, salvation comes to us as a gift. It's something that, that we, we receive. On many occasions, I've, I've seen someone experience the, the gift of salvation in their life. They've experienced forgiveness for, of their, their sins and and they, they put their faith in Jesus, and then in a matter of days, or, or maybe even in a matter of hours, they've shifted from, from living by grace, living in, in the, the shadow of, of God's grace, and into the point that they're, they're living in, in legalism. They're trying to follow a lot of rules. They're trying to, to follow a, a number of, of do's and don'ts. Now, I love the way that law and grace are described in, in the book, the, the Shack. And I want to share a, a passage with you about law and grace that is in chapter 14 of the book, and, and it's an interaction between Jesus and Mac. And Jesus said, Mac, I don't want to, to be first among a list of values, but I want to be at the center of everything. When I live in you, then together we can live through everything that happens to you. Rather than a pyramid, I want to be the center of a mobile, where everything in your life, your friends, family, occupation, thoughts, activities, is connected to me, but moves with the wind in and out and back and forth in an incredible dance of being. How do you view your Christian walk? Do you, do you view God in that walk as a pyramid, or, or do you view God as a, as a mobile? A, a pyramid is, is very rigid, and if you see God as, as a pyramid, and God's on the top of that pyramid, and, and you're climbing up that pyramid trying to, to get closer to, to God, you know, sometimes that journey up that pyramid can, can feel more like you're carrying a, a ball and chain as, as you're trying to, to work your, your way up. But another representation of our Christian walk might be that of a, of a mobile. A mobile in, in which God is, is in the center of that mobile because He wants to be in the, the center of our life. He wants to be at the, the center of, of our family, the center of our relationships, the center of, of our, our job. He wants to be the center of all we are, even in the midst of, of storms of life. You know, I just love that, that imagery that, that the author uses in, in the shack, that is, as God is the, the center of our life, and, and that mobile bounces around with, with the wind. Sometimes those winds may be gentle breezes, 
God wants to be at the center of our life in the midst of those gentle breezes. Sometimes it may be hurricane force winds that that seem to be knocking our our life around. God wants to be in the the center of that. It's not just an issue of of God being a part of our life when when it's convenient, but He he wants to be at the the center. And I also like the, the imagery that that the, the author uses it, and he talks about with God in the center of our life, it, it describes that relationship with God as, as a dance. One that has give and, and flow. Maybe it's not as predictable. It's not, you don't always know what's going to happen next. But what you do know is that you can trust God's character. You can trust God to, to be faithful. You know, this leads us into to this morning's scripture reading from Galatians chapter 3. It seems that uh, the, the believers in, in Galatia uh, are, are seeking to live their Christian life as directed by the law rather than being directed by grace. Listen to Paul's words in, in Galatians chapter 3. You foolish Galatians, who, was, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Have you suffered so much for nothing if it really was for nothing? Does God give you His Spirit and work miracles among you because you observe the law or because you believe what you heard? Paul reminds the, his readers that, that when they put their faith in Christ, they received the Holy Spirit. He reminds them that they, they didn't receive the Holy Spirit because they achieved it, because they accomplished something that it was given to them as a reward, but the Holy Spirit was given to them at the point that they believed. The Holy Spirit came at the point that they put their, their faith in Christ. And what I think happens for many of us, all believers, receive the Holy Spirit at the, at the point of, of inviting Jesus in, into their heart. And, and I think for, for many, it's very easy to respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit soon after we have experienced that saving faith. But then in a matter of days or, or maybe even hours, we slip into to not being so responsive to the Holy Spirit, but rather we, we begin trying to follow a, a bunch of do's and, and don'ts. We, we start putting legalism in our lives. Sometimes we do it to ourselves. Sometimes others do it to us. You know, Maxie Dunham, the former president of Asbury Theological Seminary, said that the Spirit's presence means the inauguration, not the consummation of the new age. In other words, when we put our faith in Christ and the Holy Spirit comes in, into our heart and life, it's the beginning, the inauguration, it's the beginning of a journey, it's not the completion of a journey. As believers empowered by the Holy Spirit... Live in the here and now. But we are, we are to live as if the kingdom of God has already arrived. Now, it's difficult to live as if we're living in the kingdom of God in the world in, in which we live. But yet the Bible tells us that, that as we are led by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can help us to live as if God's kingdom is present in the here and now. 